Piece of lignite coal. Crush it. Combine it under heat and pressure with steam and oxygen to form a gas. Then cool the gas, purify it, cool it again, dry it and compress it, and you've just completed the coal gasification process. The process is a little more complicated than that. However, this technology is at work today in North Dakota, turning coal into natural gas. What are the benefits of turning coal into natural gas? The coal gasification process not only provides fuel to heat homes, it also provides valuable byproducts that can be used to make fertilizer, wood preservatives, car headlights, lasers, weed killers, and glue, just to name a few. A byproduct is something that is produced during the process of making a main product. For example, in coal gasification, the main product is synthetic natural gas. While one of the byproducts is anhydrous ammonia, an important ingredient in crop fertilizer. The Great Plains Sinfuels plant in Beulah, North Dakota, is the only place in North America where lignite coal is turned into synthetic natural gas on a large scale for consumer and industrial use. The plant costs $2.1 billion to build. It uses more than 17,000 tons of coal per day and turns it into 150 million cubic feet of high quality natural gas. That's enough natural gas to heat 300,000 homes a day or every home in a city the size of Washington, D.C. How is coal turned into gas? The first step in turning coal into gas, or gasification, involves crushing 28,000 tons of lignite daily into two-inch diameter chunks. From the 28,000 tons, about 11,000 tons of lignite pieces smaller than one-fourth of an inch are screened out. These small pieces are called fines. Fines are too small to be used in coal gasification. At the Great Plains Sinfuels plant, these fines are transported to the nearby Antelope Valley Station power plant to be used for generating electricity. The remaining lignite is used for gasification and transported into the gasifiers. There are 14 gasifiers at Great Plains. Gasifiers are tall, hollow cylinders, about 40 feet high and 13 feet across. Lignite enters the gasifiers from the top, forming tall beds of coal. Steam and oxygen produced at the plant are fed in at the bottom of the coal bed and heated to a temperature of 2,200 degrees Fahrenheit. Under this extreme heat, the two gases break down the coal and steam to form compounds containing carbon, hydrogen, sulfur, nitrogen, and other substances into a raw gas. This raw gas exits the gasifiers and is allowed to cool, causing tars, oils, ammonia, phenols, and some steam to condense into a liquid. These liquids are then separated from the main raw gas stream, purified, processed, and transported for development into valuable byproducts. Meanwhile, the main gas stream is moved into a cleaning area where more impurities are removed. In the future, some of these impurities, such as sulfur and carbon dioxide, could also become byproducts with additional refining. Next, methanation occurs. The clean gas passes over a catalyst made of nickel. A catalyst is a substance that speeds up a chemical reaction without changing itself. When this nickel catalyst comes in contact with the gas, it causes a chemical reaction which forms methane, or natural gas. This main product is then cooled, dried, compressed, and fed as natural gas into a pipeline where it goes to upper Midwest states such as Michigan, Wisconsin, Iowa, Illinois, and Indiana to heat homes. Byproducts are then made from the remaining gases and liquids. What byproducts can be made and what are they used for? The gasification process gives us a variety of byproducts that can be separated for development. Byproducts of the coal gasification process include anhydrous ammonia, sulfur, liquid nitrogen, phenols, crude chrysilic acids, tar oils, and naphtha. 
Most of these byproducts aren't very useful in their raw states, but when processed, they can be put to work in a variety of forms. Anhydrous ammonia is used as a farm fertilizer. Sulfur can be converted to sulfuric acid, which has many uses in the chemical industry. Carbon dioxide can be used by the oil industry to force more oil out of wells. Liquid nitrogen is a vital chemical used in the refrigeration process. Phenols are used for resins, laminates, adhesives, and insulations. Resins made from phenols are used in making plywood. Tar oils can be broken down into wood preservatives, gasoline additives, and medical uses. In the large air separation plants, the byproducts krypton and xenon are separated and purified from oxygen produced for the gasifiers. Krypton is a gas used in halogen headlights, fluorescent lights, and high-intensity lights. Xenon is used in high-intensity lasers and medical equipment such as CAT scanners. Crude chrysilic acids can be refined into products used in food preservatives, pesticides, soap, lotions, and cleaning compounds. Developing and marketing these byproducts is one of the long-term challenges facing the coal gasification industry. What's the future of coal gasification in the United States? Experts have long argued that the United States could greatly reduce its dependence on foreign oil by advancing the technology to make petroleum substitutes from coal. The Great Plains Sinfuels plant offers North Dakota the opportunity to show the world that natural gas from lignite is no longer a dream, but a real product that is already heating homes and providing valuable byproducts to this country. Synthetic fuels offer this country some exciting opportunities. The new technologies, processes, and products coming from the Great Plains Sinfuels plant have put North Dakota on the leading edge of technology in the race for America's energy independence.